Hi, I'm in the uh, London Cinema Museum in Kennington. And tonight, the um, Oscar-winning director and film historian Kevin Brownlow is doing a presentation of 9.5mm silent films. Objectionist Dave Locke here has just shown a 9.5mm print of a silent film called Alias Jimmy Valentine from 1928 with William Haynes. I heard you've been film collecting from a very early age and I was wondering if you could tell me how it all began with your collecting sort of business. Well, I went to a horrible sporting school just after the war called, uh, well I won't tell you what it was called, but it was like Coley's. And the only decent thing that the headmaster did was to show us silent films, that's all you could have, you didn't have a sound projector, uh, every third Sunday. And we all look forward to these as the only exciting thing that happened at the school. And so I was introduced to Chaplin, Harold Lloyd, and old Douglas Fairbanks from, um, I suppose I was ten or nine or ten, and I, when I got home, I asked my parents for a projector, and they gave me a, unfortunately I didn't say, a movie projector, and they gave me a still projector. <laughs> well anyway, the next year, another Christmas, they made up for it, and I got a projector with a handle on the side, and 9.5 millimeter prints like the ones we're showing tonight. Yeah, and I also hear you've had long associations with many people like um, Thames Television, like with Jeremy Isaacs and Carl Davis, like when you did um, the your TV documentaries like Hollywood and all that, Chaplin, Keaton and Harold Lloyd, and you also did um, the Thames and Channel 4 Silence for with Carl Davis and Jeremy Isaacs, and I've, and I've seen some of the films that you've restored, like Napoleon and Safety Last. Well, I didn't expect this hobby to become a career, but I was supposed to be an independent filmmaker, and um, I got a, was contacted by Jeremy Isaacs, who said that... No, I wrote to Jeremy Isaacs having just seen an amazing series he'd done called The World War. And I sent a fan letter to him, and he replied saying, strangely enough, I've just given your book, The Parade's Gone By, to everybody who worked on the program, and I think there's a series in it. I couldn't believe my luck that he would suddenly come to the conclusion that there was a series in the American silent film. That wasn't quite what he had in mind. He had in mind a history of Hollywood from the beginning to now. And no sooner had he made that decision than Fox Television came out with a series on the history of Hollywood from the beginning to now. So he said, can we just concentrate on the silent era? Do you think there's a series in it? And I said, there certainly is. And then that resulted in Napoleon and then the Thames silence. That's right, and uh, the first one we chose actually was Broken Blossoms, but the producer we had, not Jeremy Isaacs, but somebody else, thought it was too corny. So that's when we came up with Napoleon, which blew everybody out of the water. Tim said, OK, we'll do one of these each. Each time there's a London Film Festival, we'll put on a silent restoration with live orchestra, and it went on for 19 years until some new fellow took over at Channel 4 called Michael Jackson and scrapped after 19 years. And I remember thinking when the pop star called Michael Jackson died, I said, God, you got the wrong one. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, and you've worked with not just Thames, you've also worked in also as well as the silent film world, you've been working with sound films and all that. You also work with directors like Lindsay Anderson and Peter Watkins. Well actually Peter Watkins was my assistant in the cutting room. And uh, he was an amateur filmmaker who was interested in making the same sort of films that I was. And Andrew Mollo, my, part, my uh, filmmaking partner, we all seemed to be obsessed by the war, possibly because we'd lived through it. Um, and uh, Peter Watkins produced some excellent amateur films and then um, came up with this idea of we just involved him in a big feature about what might have happened if England had lost World War II. And he then went on to make a film about what might have happened if England had lost World War III. What do you think about silent films being... What do you think about silent films being shown today, now that technology has moved on since the Hollywood in my, days? In my, youth, <coughs> in my youth, the great threat came from rather sparse audiences, but as soon as they saw a scene set in the 1920s with a woman in a, a funny hat, they tittered at it, and they tittered all the way through the film and completely did not connect with it. But that, those people have either reformed or passed on somewhere else, and now the great threat to silent films is the musical score. They, the people who finance, sponsor these events, seem to think that the only way of getting young people in is to have the music of their generation. Ah. It's completely out of sympathy with the era that we're dealing with, <clears throat> and they kill film after film after film and yeah. then DVDs are equipped with these terrible scores yeah. variety with the tiger lilies for God's sake thank you very much for the interview Kevin thank you very much well I hope you like that video hopefully I'll have some more coming and for any viewers out there who like what I'm doing good want to help my channel and for me to keep it up um, like it, share it, and do subscribe because it'll really help my channel. Thank you.